Grade 10s and welcome to Learn Extra. My name is Haley, and I'm going to take you through today's session. So let's see what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at, I need a pen for this, we're going to be looking at ratio, proportion, rate and percentage. Right, let's begin. Our key focus for today is ratio, proportion, rates and percentages. And I'm going to take each one of those very carefully and slowly and go through one at a time. So let's start with ratio. Right. The definition of a ratio is a ratio is a comparison of two numbers. We call these numbers terms of the ratio. Ratios have no units and that's really, really important for us to bear in mind. The quantities being compared are of the same kind or type. So it's important for us to note that there are no units and they are the same kind or type. <clears throat> and ratios can be different, written in different ways. We can write them in words, so we're going to write the ratio of A to B. We can write it with a colon, which also means A to B, and we can write it as a fraction A to B. What's important about the fact that we can write it as a fraction is we can use it as if it is just a fraction. And that is a really important fact to bear in mind when we start calculating with ratios and we start using the ratios to actually answer questions. So we're going to use our fraction. Right, let's look at a simple example. So, suppose there are 12 boys and 9 girls in a class. Now what would be really nice when dealing with ratios is use different colors for each one of the terms of the ratio. So my boys I'm going to underline in green and my girls I'm going to underline in pink. The ratio of the boys to girls can be written as follow. Now what is important is that boys always come first in this particular example. So the word that you saw first represents the number that needs to come first. So boys were first therefore boys needs to come first and that's why colors, highlighters really makes it a whole lot easier when answering questions. So let's, you get the green and we're going to say that's 12 boys to 9 girls. Now I can also write it with a colon, again I'm going to use my green for the boys so that's 12 boys to 9 girls and finally my fraction is my 12, I'm going to mark it like that and my nine girls at the bottom. Okay, so ratios can be written in equivalent form and therefore used for comparison. So this would almost be a proportion. So let's look at the two ratios are equal, then the four quantities are said to form a proportion. So my ratio and proportion actually kind of interlink. A ratio is a comparison of two values and if I increase those values by a set amount, I'm going to increase both of them, I'm going to get a new answer which is going to be my proportion. So my original two are in proportion to the next two. So let's see this in the text. Let's, for example, write, if I've got three, which I'm going to, using green, is in the ratio of three to twelve, and that we're going to do in pink. Right. If I increase my 3, let's get another colour, if I increase my 3 to 6, what am I doing to 3 to get 6? I am multiplying by 2. I am doubling it. What I do to the top, I need to do to the bottom. That's our rules of fractions. So I need to multiply by 2 at the bottom. And I get the ratio of now 6 to what colour did we use? Pink. To 24. Those two fractions are in a direct proportion to each other. We can create this again. We can change it. So let's try another one. Let's create an equal one where we're going to change our three. Let's now make it one and a half. 
1 comma 5. So I'm going to delete this and we're going to go what did we do from 3 to get 1 and a half? Well we divided it by 2 and then we need to do the same thing at the bottom. That one and a half should have been in green. Let's go back and make that green. And now my pink, 12, I'm going to divide that by 2 and it'll be 6. Those are all actually equal fractions and they're in proportion to each other. Let's look at another example. If we wanted to mix cement to patch a crack in the wall, we've noticed that builders make six pockets of cement and that's my first unit to 18 pockets of sand. So I'm going to again use my colours. If we need to mix two cups of cement, no, that cement needs to be in green. Two cups of cement with six cups of sand. I'm getting very confused here with my colours. Six cups of sand. Are we using them in the same proportion as the builders? So let's find some space here. Right, and we had six pockets of cement. That was in green. Six pockets, and we're going to now write it, and 18 pockets of sand. So I've got my cement in green and my sand in pink. So it makes it easier for me to carry on. Now I want to know two cups. This is what I'm mixing. I've got two cups wrong color, two cups to the ratio of, and now what was that, six. And I need to know if these are equal to each other. So what am I going to do? I'm going to write them as fractions. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to use a different color totally because I've got the ratio written out in the colors. Now I can manipulate them. So I've got six to 18 and I want to know if that is equal to 2 to 6. So I'm going to ignore this 6. I'm going to actually delete it. And I'm going to calculate how many cups of sand I would have needed and then check if I've got the correct amount. So what do I do to 6 to get 2? How do I go from 6 to 2? Well, that's easy. I divided it by 3. So now... For 18, I need to divide that by 3, and 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. So I can see clearly that this ratio that I had here is correct, and I am mixing a small amount of cement, but I'm mixing it in the same proportions that the boulders use. So I should be able to fix the crack without a problem. Before we carry on with the next thing, I want to briefly discuss direct proportion and inverse proportion. So these two words that you're going to see throughout MathSlit. The first is direct proportion. Direct proportion means that we're dealing with two values and as the one goes up, the other goes up as well and it goes up in the same proportion. That means it is a direct proportion. So as one unit goes up, the other unit goes up, and this happens at the same proportion. So anywhere along this point of this proportion, I can find equal fractions. That's what I'm looking at. It also means that as the one goes down, the other value will also go down in the same proportion. That is still direct. So we can change this word, the up, we can say as it goes up, it could go down, the other one goes down. So as one unit goes down, the other goes down in the same proportion. Inverse proportion, on the other hand, let me delete that. Inverse proportion, on the other hand, is as the one unit goes up, the other, whoops, the other goes down in the same proportion.
So as the one unit goes up, the other goes down in the same proportion, and we can change that around. So as the one unit goes down, the other one will go up. This all sounds very confusing. I've used a lot of ups and downs, and let's just look at two quick examples. I think that'll make it easier for us. So let's find some blank space. Let's delete that. Right, let's first look at direct. So, for example, if I had a chocolate bar that cost me five rand. That's for one chocolate bar. If I bought two chocolate bars, I'm going to pay 10 rand. And if I bought three, it's going to go up to 15, 15 rand. So can you see quite clearly that as this unit is going up, right, as I'm going from one to three, I'm going up. So my five rand to 15 rand is also going up. That is a direct proportion. Now let's think of an example where there would be an inverse. So let's change our color pen. Right, if I had an inverse proportion. Right, let's say, for example, in this case, I had um, 100 rand. If I was going to split this amongst children, and I had 100 rand to split, if there was one child, that child is going to get 100 rand. If there were two children, I'm going to have to split that amount and they're each going to get 50 rand. If there were four children, they would each get 25 rand. So can you see in this case, as this is going up, this is actually going down. And what I mean by the same proportion is, I doubled to get from one to two, I halved to get from 100 to 50. From 1 to 4, I times by 4, and then I divided by 4. So I'm doing the reverse, and that is where the inverse comes from. So let me just write that out for you so you can actually fully follow. So I had from 1 to change to 4, I times by 4. And from 100 to get to 25, I divided by 4. So I'm doing the reverse. And that is an inverse proportion. And it occurs in the same proportion. I'm still using my 4. The 4 hasn't changed. Okay, let's move on to the next part, which is rates. Next explanation. So the explanation of rates, it's a special type of ratio. It is still a comparison of two values, which is ratio. But in this case, we're comparing two different quantities. And that's the difference between rate and ratio. The way we deal with it mathematically with our fractions and the way we can write it is very similar. In fact, it's the same. So we can deal with rates the exact same way we deal with ratio. That's, and I'm going to, with our fractions. And that's an important point, equal fractions, etc. So, but it compares two different values. So let's look at example. The cost of petrol per liter. So I'm going to have the number of rands that it costs me per, I think petrol is what, 10 rand 40, around about there, per liter. So it's important to note that we've got rands and liters, they're two different quantities, but for every one liter, it costs me 10 rand 40. Another example is speed, the distance we travel per hour. So, for example, 60 kilometers per hour. And what's important about this, let me use a thing, is when we write our, we write our ratios, we see this every day. And we don't think about it as two values. We travel 60 kilometers per hour. In our heads, we just think about the 60. We forget what that per means. And this actually means we're traveling 60 kilometers in one hour. So that's how I can write my fraction, 60 over 1. And the last one we've got to look at is the tax rate. 
So that is 14% of good or services. Why I've shown you this is it's not showing you two different values, but it is a rate of tax and it's showing you that it is a constant rate. We're going to see that in our constant rate. We're going to see this as we do questions when we carry on with our math syllabus that we have a constant rate. It means that every time we buy something, 14%, every time we buy something, 14% of that is actually VAT. It never changes. It is a constant 14% on everything that we, we buy, except for there's a few little things that are excluded, and brown bread is one of them. And um, you can actually go and look up what are excluded from VAT, but everything else, there is a constant rate of 14%. Right. Um, I think before we go on to do our questions, let's take a five minute break just so that we can think about all those explanations and we can solidify what we've done, have a little break and we can go on and do some questions.